that. Which actually then brings me uh, to the other thing that we speak, uh, that, that, that we did a whole uh, week on, pretty much derived from the same, which was the week of mindfulness. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another big topic. <laughs> another, uh, another hugely, incredibly beneficial thing which plenty of people are just ignoring. But tell me, what do you understand with mindfulness? You, you're a coach, you've been working in the area of the mind and, and improving yeah. your mind. Yeah. So, what do you understand with mindfulness? I, I have a very uh, hard-nosed practical approach to mindfulness uh, and I follow David Allen's system called GTD, getting things mm -hmm. done. Uh, I, I would in fact call GTD one of the most scientific, one of the most practical, doable things to achieve mindfulness. There is a system where you put all your thoughts in an external system. Mm. So there is no incentive for you to hang on to your thoughts because mm. you know it's there. Mm. It's either going to come up to you in a Google alert, a Google calendar alert in your inbox or it's in your notebook and you're sure you're going to look at that notebook. Mm. So it's very practical and I, I, I right now for example I am completely completely mindful. I have absolutely nothing and I know this appears to be exaggerated but I have absolutely nothing because I have my notebook right there and uh, whatever I want, whatever thoughts came to my mind before we started this uh, having having job. We, we had some conversation and, and I didn't commit any to memory. Well, the important points that we converse about are there in my notebook right now. So if I wouldn't have done that, mm. then I would have been trying to recollect mm. that and would either be trying to move it to my long-term memory mm. or would have to keep on reminding myself that I got to move this to the notebook sooner or later. So uh, I literally have an empty mind. Uh, and that exactly is what mindfulness is. So you and I are both coaches. When we did our coaching uh, certifications, there was a term we studied which is about processing in the present, yeah. which is about being here and now. And so the first part of it is is, is actually the easier part of the window that you spoke about, the fact that there is no need to clutter my mind with anything that I don't need for it to think. But the fact is that the mind can only think one thing at a time. They could do only one thing at a time. The whole concept of multitasking is a myth, and this we will cover um, at some other point in time. So the whole concept of mindfulness is processing in the present, being in the here and the now. This is where you are, this is where I am. There is nothing else that I have on my mind. Now, the whole concept of processing in the present is a tough concept because the mind is a monkey mind. So Thich Nhat talks about the fact that uh, the fact that the mind is constantly moving. So this is exactly what you're saying in the present day, that you are here and I am here. And there's nothing else that we're focusing on. You are completely and actively engaged with I am, with me, and I am completely engaged with you. Uh, the reason processing in the present is so difficult is because we have the monkey mind. It's very easy, in fact, in the meditative practice, we say that it's very easy to live in the anger or the hurt of the past mm -hmm. okay. or the fear of the future. Uh -huh. So to bring it back to saying now, here, this, this is it, uh, is what processing in the present is, is what calming the monkey mind is. And you're absolutely right. The kind of things that you've done, which has noted down what was important, put it away, knowing that you've already done delegated or deleted. So whatever needed to be done has either been done, whoever needed to do it has already been told. There's no baggage that you carry in your mind at all. So the first step of mindfulness was about processing in the present. The second one, and, and this was very interesting for me, uh, because the concept of mindfulness is the concept of one moment. Mm -hmm. right? Being present at one space, being at one with yourself. Mm -hmm. Sanskrit, yoga. Okay. I was thinking of the word Ekagrata, I'm not sure if that's... <laughs> Ekagrata is concentration. Okay. Ekagrata is concentration or focus. But yoga, and, and why I found this very fascinating in the concept of mindfulness, was because I have often wondered, both my parents are yogis, and I used to often wonder, what is yoga? Who are they uniting with? It is the union of what? Okay. Till I figured that the concept of yoga is about being one with yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and why it's so fascinating is because it doesn't matter what you're doing or what is it that drives you. Right? So yoga is the, the four kinds of yoga. There is the karma yoga, there is the jnana yoga, there is the bhakti yoga and there is the raja yoga. Okay. So it doesn't, you don't have to be 
uh, there's no prescription on what you must be doing to be mindful, to be here, to be at one with yourself. Right? If you derive joy out of action, if you're the kind of person who should constantly be engaged in action, then there's karma yoga for you. But just do that. And so you can find union or mindfulness or at one moment with just the work. Mm-hmm. That's karma yoga. Mm-hmm. Bhakti yoga is finding yourself or being at one with yourself in absolute surrender. Mm-hmm. In absolute emotional surrender. You can be at one with knowledge, which is Jnana Yoga. In just seeking knowledge or wisdom, you can be at one with yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's all that you're doing at that point of time. Or if you're the person that who's about energy, who's about will, who's about a process, you can be the Raja Yogi. Mm-hmm. So what I find fascinating is that there is no prescriptive one way to be mindful, to be in the here and the now, to bring you back into yourself. It is what you choose to do. So Siddharth, for instance, is your classic karma yogi. He must have action after the other. Only when he's engaged in an activity, a task, an action, does he feel fulfilled, purposeful, mindful, he's there, right there. Right? I probably just chase the jnana. I don't think I'm anywhere near being a jnana yogi. But I, when, when I'm with some knowledge, some wisdom, some thought that I'm seeking, mm-hmm. I'm absolutely at peace and mindful. I'm right there. Right. Right. My father lives in absolute surrender. He's an army man. So one would think that he'd be the karma yogi, very militant, very martial. But he actually lives in surrender. Mm-hmm. It allows him to be the better soldier mm-hmm. when he is lived in faith, emotion, love and surrender. So, okay. I find that a very useful tip for mindfulness which is not prescriptive, which is about finding your own space okay. of being in the here and the now, of processing in the present. And the reason that you need to do this is so that you are engaged with yourself. So you can be mindful only if you are engaged with yourself okay. and not chasing somebody else's goals. We often have this concept of the hedonic treadmill, which we never get off of. Right? So we are on this treadmill and we are constantly chasing one goal after the other, one goal after the other. We don't even know whose goals they are. We don't know whether they are ours or we are proving a point. We don't know what we are trying to establish. Right. Mindfulness allows you to get off that treadmill. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It allows to you to be present with your own self. Right. And the yoga that you follow allows you to do it with whatever catches your fancy, whatever you are best at, whatever you are most comfortable with, whatever's your trip to be on. So that was mindfulness for us. So A, why it was important. B, how do you get there? And C, how there's no prescription, but you have to make your choices to just be there. Right, and the mobile phone makes it very difficult to be mindful. Right. The trainers we do this all the time, right? It's it's, it's a much bigger enemy than I mean, it's surprising to me people are not thinking deeply enough as to how do they reduce the mobile consumption. It's actually scary. It's weird, yeah. So as a rule, I don't talk to anybody who's on the phone ever. Ah, okay. Yeah. I just I've, don't I've, talk uh, to somebody who's, who's, who's on the phone. Yeah. I've done that. I've uh, decluttered my life of people who, uh, who would want to meet me without the mobile phones. And, uh, Forget how disrespectful Dharmendra it is to the other person. It's not a disrespect, it's a reducing the quality of your life to nothing. To your own self, forget what I'm going to you from on the phone when I'm talking to you. (laughs) But think of how how shabbily I'm treating my own thoughts, my own engagement with you. I mean, how shabbily am I treating my own self? Yeah, but then if that person doesn't realize it, the best thing that you can do is move away. Really sad, no? yeah. it's, it's just, it actually just scares me to see the kind of engagement that happens from that. Yeah, I, I was at a seminar yesterday, uh, there was a speaker from China, a, mm. a very brilliant businessman from China, and two times uh, the mobile phones just ran out loudly in thought. It's, it's just completely acceptable. Uh, it's, uh, it's crazy, I, I think this is a big challenge, and uh, I, I hope people realize that it's these these things like sleep and mindfulness is so important 
and you just do something about it. Uh, like have a no a mobile time in your house or no mobile room in your house or something like that. So if there's no process, it won't work. Our entire thing has a lot of discipline from the yeah. outside. So I've been for the last three years trying to implement. So we have two teenage shoulders in the house. Yeah, so live, live with the Wi-Fi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep the charges locked in uh, a place with a good password. <laughs> so I, what I've done is that from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. old phones lie centrally on the coffee table. So, and and they are most welcome to be not on silent. That's your choice. Mm -hmm. If you have to take call, you will stand there in the center of the house, take that call and put that back. Uh, well, three yeah. hours I've been trying to implement it and I'm still trying. Which I, uh, that's, that's my philosophy. Right. Okay, so 